Hello and welcome to the news not shown on TV and in this episode I want to look at the news that is shown on TV to show you how sometimes they don't tell us the truth about very important matters and I thought I'd begin by looking at an advertisement of TV1 here in New Zealand where I come from where they promote themselves. For me it feels really legit and really credible. One have never disappointed. It's the news that sinks. It helps me to prepare my family better for, say, tomorrow, because I know what's happening today. I'll make that effort to find the people who are behind the story. Just see it as professional and truthful and yeah, go there to get your facts. For the big things, it's more news than sex. It's definitely New Zealand news. And so the advert says that people feel that the news is legit and credible and also it can help us prepare for tomorrow because we know what's going on today and that it's truthful and also well researched but in the case of telling the story about our trading banks here in New Zealand we are told that these banks belong to Australia but really they belong to the Jewish international bankers especially the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers so let's have a look now at this TV1 item first it's a tale of David versus Goliath, the big Australian-owned banks in New Zealand posting a combined $4.6 billion profit. But as James Ransley reports, that Kiwi-owned banks are fighting back for their share. Cooking up a challenge for the Australian banks. Cooking up croc dogs here, Ooh. crocodile meat and, uh, and, and, a bit of pork. Uh, and a bit of pork. And, you know, it's sort of about stick it to the Aussies. It's a publicity stunt, cooperative bank encouraging New Zealanders to go Kiwi. The, the four big Australian-owned banks, so that's ANZ, ASB, BNZ and Westpac, they have a, a, around 90% market share in New Zealand. In this financial year, they made a combined net profit of nearly $4.6 billion. I don't like that their money's going offshore. I'd rather that it was in New Zealand because the economy needs it. Massey University's David Trite says it's worth having the big Australian banks here. Particularly at times of the global financial crisis was that we actually had some relatively strong banks operating in New Zealand. That meant that we were much less negatively impacted that we might have been in other contexts. The consumer watchdog says New Zealand banks have higher satisfaction rates than their Australian counterparts. If you do want to go local, there are five New Zealand-owned banks to choose from, including Kiwi Bank, which is the biggest, although it only has a 7% share of the market. Recent surveys have shown that Kiwis aren't too keen on switching banks. I think it is because, you know, once you've got your mortgage and you've got your deposit account and everything else set up, people will think it's too hard. In fact, it isn't actually that hard to switch your bank account. I would go to a New Zealand one if it gave us the better deal. I mean, I've always been with Westpac, so, I mean, I've got no reason to not be with Westpac. The debate over Australian-owned banks giving Kiwis food for thought. James Ransley. Now, most of that item is fairly harmless. But we're told five times by TV1 and also an internet provider and a Massey University professor that Australians own our trading banks here in New Zealand, which is a complete lie. For big Australian-owned banks. Australian banks. Four big Australian-owned banks, so that's ANZ, ASB, BNZ and Westpac. Massey University's David Trite says it's worth having the big Australian banks here. The debate over Australian-owned banks giving Kiwis food for thought. But unfortunately... These people are not telling New Zealand the truth about the ownership of our major trading banks, which take 90% of our profits, $4.6 billion a year, out of our country. And that is because the owners of the ANZ, uh, the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, JP Morgan Chase, and Citigroup. And when we look at the ownership of the BNZ, we see that the three primary shareholders, the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, JP Morgan Chase, and Citigroup. Likewise, with the Westpac, we see the three major shareholders there are the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, JP Morgan Chase, and Citigroup. And when we look at the ASB, it's the same three principal shareholders Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, JP Morgan Chase, and Citigroup, which is Wall Street, the international bankers who have funded not only the Chinese Revolution, but also the Bolshevik Revolution and all the revolutions around the world and they support globalism and they oppose nationalism and so if we're interested in the nation of New Zealand we've got to realize that we're actually being controlled by these powerful international forces and also we see there UBS in Switzerland and also Deutsche Bank in Germany who funded the Nazis and so these international bankers 
are a notorious group. And not only that, we're not told on the news that is shown on TV about our Reserve Bank. Most New Zealanders think that our Reserve Bank is owned by New Zealanders, by our country, by the taxpayers. But it's not. It's privately owned and it's kept secret. And we see that it was set up way back in 1930 during the Great Depression by Bank of England people who were international Jews, people like Otto Nehemiah and also Professor Gregory. And so we know, for example, that this is a complete ruse that has been sold to New Zealanders through the news that is shown on TV. And another thing that is a complete ruse is the way that we're told about UFOs, which are a military weapon of war. And we have UFOs here in New Zealand from time to time. And this is how TV One dismisses it, thanks to Mike Hosking putting on a great show. Loins, you're slicing it down that way. So you're amazing tonight. You're on fire. I'm on fire. Mystery surrounds a technicolored orb. What is it? It's a, it's a UFO. Oh, you don't know that? It is a UFO. It bo it's been bobbing around Christchurch's night sky this week, and the UFO that was captured on video by um, O'Sheen Lavelle, and he wants your, um, your help to identify it. As Mike Thorpe reports, the Canterbury Coast is no stranger to the unexplained. It's as though aliens have discovered disco, a multicoloured flashing orb dancing across the Canterbury sky. A lighting trick or the latest chapter in New Zealand's own Area 51. In history, back in 1978, it was Kaikota that was being watched. The Television One Network News with Dougal Stevenson. There's been another sighting of what may be a UFO over the Kaikoura coast. Mysterious lights seen by pilots fueling alien hysteria. Why couldn't it have been uh, another aircraft or a large bird or a ship at sea? Well, birds don't carry lights. There were more in the 80s. It was oblong shape and uh, very bright. And then it sort of spinning back and forth, and then we go up and down. And the 90s. Intergalactic planets, you're free! I thought it could have been something like a flying saucer or something. And then there was the space worm type pong kind of thing from last decade. So are they back? Almost 40 years on from Kaikoura, one question remains the same. I think the first thing we should establish is the authenticity of this film. Ooh. So, oh, steady on. <laughs> Some claim is the videos are a hoax, but just for a second, just for a second, think about how hard it would be to actually oh, make exactly. one. Exactly. You if you think you could make a hoax UFO video good enough, or I suppose bad enough to fool someone, send it to us. We want to see it. You can upload it to our Facebook page. For me, it feels really legit and really credible. One have never disappointed. It's the news that sinks. Helps me to prepare my family better for, say, tomorrow, because I know what's happening today. They'll make that effort to find the people who are behind the story. Just see it as professional and truthful and you know, go there to get your facts. For the big things, it's more news than sex. It's definitely New Zealand news.